Okay, for our start today's RPCS3 and how to update your game setup guide. If you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel. Just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide, and it really helps out my channel too. So, from time to time, people ask me how do I update games through RPCS3 as well as add DLC. It's fairly quite easy to do. So, what we're going to do first is take a look at update files. These are going to be the same pretty much as DLC. So right just here, I got two separate update files for two separate games using RPCS3. We'll notice these are in .pkg, that's .package, and this is what's accepted in RPCS3. So there's something we need to look at just here. It's the actual serial number of the games themselves. Normally, we'll see it just here, BLES00422, etc. And if we take a look at the other update file I've got just here, we'll see the same here. So BLES00256. So what we're going to do is open up RPCS3 and we're going to compare those files with the games I've got. So here we go, if we take a look at the games I've got just here, I've got Alone in the Dark and I've also got Race Driver Grid. Here's the serial numbers. So if I just minimize and go back to those files again, we'll look at the first one just here, which I've got highlighted, BLES00422. So this one corresponds with Alone in the Dark, as we can see is exactly the same. And you'll notice in RPCS3, if a game needs to update, it will say update available. Now, some games such as Little Big Planet, it's got to have around, I don't know, 12 to 15 different updates. You need to do these in order. So instead of just updating directly to the latest update or the last update that game ever received, you need to do it in sequence one after the other virtually. So what we're going to do is show you two ways of updating your game then. So first of all, I'm going to start off with Alone in the Dark. So if I just drag and drop that file, that package, into the emulator. Do you want to install this package, Alone in the Dark? Yes. And there we go. We can now press OK. And if we go back to look at the game, we can now see is it version 1.02, which was the last update that game received. Another way of doing it is by going up to File, and from File we can go to Install Packages, Wraps, and EDATs. If I left click on this one, I can then navigate to my desktop, and if I just scroll down a touch, here's my updates, and I'm going to update Race Driver Grid. So double left click, and yes, and here we go. So if we go back into RPCS3, we can now see both of the games are fully updated with the latest or the last updates. Now, when you go to start up a game after updating it, it will have to compile PPUs and everything else. And this can be time consuming, so you're virtually doing the same as what you would be when you first install the game or open up the game rather of RPCS3. So there is some uh, patience to wait for this. And that's about it. So like I said just a second ago, it's literally just another case of waiting for your game to load up as you initially would once you launch a game for the first time with RPCS3. And if you've got DLC, then it's the same process. You can either drag or drop those files into the emulator, into the GUI, or you can go up to File and install Package DLC. Anyways, that's it. So if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. And if you're curious what games run perfectly on RPCS3 nowadays, check out my gameplay videos. I'm just creating a series now and I've already uploaded a few RPCS3 videos which demonstrate some really awesome games running through the emulator. I'll leave a couple of the links in my description so you can check those out. Anyways, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.